What's something you'd find in a lower class home that rich people wouldn't understand? No towel is ever the same. Just random odd towels and face cloths. Bonus points for beach towels with Disney characters on them. Super faded and from the 90s. And those are the best towels because they dry way better than the newer ones. And you don't question the stains. You know it's clean because you washed it after you cleaned up vomit and beer with it yesterday. There was a scene from Family Guy where Carter Pewter Schmidt, Lois Rich Dad, visits their house. When he walks in, he says, Oh, I forgot you were poor and so your front door opens directly into your living room. I felt that. The front door opened into my childhood bedroom that I shared with my two brothers. We use the back door exclusively. Yeah, a common room that also serves as a bedroom. I think most of my kids friends don't even understand that some siblings have to share rooms. As a kid, grabbing our clothes in the morning and dressing in front of the wood stove because it was the only warm spot in the house. In the summer, fans everywhere and all the windows open. Several almost worn out pairs of cheap shoes. Ah yes the work shoes so you don't mess up your nice shoes. Until they become the work shoes. And so the cycle goes. Diluted dishwashing soap that doubles as hand washing soap. Growing up poor. I've actually used Dawn dish soap as laundry detergent and Tide laundry detergent as dish soap. Use whatever you have on hand. I use Dawn for spot treatment. Works great on any oil grease stains. When it's really hot in the south it can be hard to sleep. I keep a Mr. Water bottle by the bed and mist the sheet before I go to sleep and periodically cool off through the night. When my GF came with me to visit my parents with me last summer she was confused. On a similar note, putting the stopper in the sink and soaking each foot in cold water for a few minutes till you start to feel cool enough to sleep again. Yeah, I may have mentioned that offhand as a solution when a friend at college mentioned the dorms being too warm and was pretty much met with concerned lux and told that's not normal. I'm a postmenopausal woman. I'll be putting a mister next to my bedside fan tonight. Thank you for the genius idea. Man, this thread really brought home the fact that I am lower class. Oh well, I will continue to be thankful for everything I have. Sips cheap beer from novelty pizza hut glass wear. Look at Mr. Fancy Pants drinking beer from a glass. My bedroom is the living room of our trailer. I tied a rope from one wall to another and raped a blanket over it so I have somewhat of a wall. The bathroom at my house growing up never had a door, just a curtain. It really sucked because it was between the bedrooms, and I had a curtain side. No privacy in the bathroom or in my room. We bought a house a few years ago. And we have a curtain for a door on our bathroom. I had just saved up the money to get a door put in when covered it. But we're so fancy. We have two bathrooms. And the other one has a door. The drawer where you put the bills you have to pay but don't need to pay immediately to live. The drawer is only emptied after it won't close anymore because 16 duplicates have been received and said bill is no closer to getting paid. I feel personally attacked by this statement. I think western poor houses would tend to be more cluttered. You can't rebuy things easily, so you end up keeping around doubles of things you already have, or extra things you aren't using but might need some time, because you don't know if you'd be able to afford it in the future. My dad wouldn't let his partner get rid of any of the double kitchen where they had after moving in together in case they broke up and he had to buy it again, so now they have three bread knives, etc. That's true. But I also know folks with money who have junk all over the place. It comes from having enough room that you can just dump your Christmas junk in a room and close the door till next year. Or your kids get so many toys that they never open them all. As a former child, I do not believe there is a kid out there that gave up and did not open all of them. No matter the pile. Glassware that is actually novelty fast food cups and mugs stolen from work. And all my fancy glassware are from the liquor gift sets lol. Oh yeah that too. You mean jelly jars with cartoon characters? In college, we had exclusively stolen barware to drink out of. I'm a 30 year old homeowner and all we have is stolen pint glasses from bars. I felt like a total a-hole once. I was visiting someone for coffee, and something spilled, so I was helping wipe it up. A single AA battery rolled toward me on the counter, and I asked if it needed to be someplace, and was told it went in a drawer. I opened the drawer. And there were several batteries, but none in packages. I said, damn. Don't you hate it when you accidentally destroy the packaging getting a couple of batteries out? 
and then have to find a place to put them all. It turned out they didn't leave batteries in small devices, they just put them in to use the item, then took them back out and saved them to use in something else when needed. Wow I've never heard of that before. Smart if you've dealt with corrosion from a leaky old battery. Sad if it's for the reasons it sounds like. A lot of unfinished renovations. My life growing up. We had random test paint spots on so many walls. We tore down the wallpaper in the bathroom but then never did anything after. We were supposedly going to redo the floors in the bedroom so I was allowed to draw all over my room in middle school and we never did those and it looked too bad and was so embarrassing. My home growing up had wood framing in the basement that my parents put up as part of the start of a basement finishing project in the 1980s. That framing is still there today and it has never seen a single drywall nail. I grew up middle class too. It boils down to priorities I guess. I feel this one to my core. Shh, turns out I'm lower class too. There's a trick to it phrase to indicate something is messed up but not enough to fix it. See also ya yeah, gotta jiggle the handle. I'm the workplace trick guy. And my workplace has so many tricks. Need to turn the light on? Oh. The switch is in the other room and you need to jiggle the button. The old android pad that plays music? Oh. You gotta bend the charger cord this way and let her have a second to catch up. This door needs locking? Lift it up as you turn the lock. That door needs unlocking? You gotta tap it three times. Do a spin and answer a riddle. It sucks when your doors end up developing a sphinx in the handle. That's for sure. Yogurt. Other grocery containers used as Tupperware. A bunch of basins for hand washing clothes in the bathtub. Cool whip bowls as Tupperware. Cool whip in general. Feel like rich people would have real whipped cream and not whipped veggie oil. I call that recycling. Those containers are pretty good. Reusing. The first tenant in reduce. Reuse. Recycle. I clicked on this thread to say bag of bags. But I feel like this pretty much covers that. Reusing single use plastics should be considered a service to the planet. You're a hero. Sometimes you can have sleep for dinner. Can totally feel this to my core. My husband who had no bad intentions once told me he grew up poor. This is a kid whose parents owned a business. They lived in their own board house. He went to private school. Told him about all the times I had sleep for dinner. He has never mentioned growing up poor again. Why the f did he think he was poor? This made me sad. Obviously depends on the person. But clutter. Rich people often have more space and more options for organizing their things out of sight. Poor people have fewer places to put things and often a harder time letting go of stuff because what if they need it later and can't afford a new one? My last apartment had a storage space that was a weird indentation that was like one foot deep. Too shallow to actually store anything in. But we had nowhere else to put some of our stuff. Some people will be like um just get rid of the stuff you don't need, which is hard for poor people. But also I think most people forget that winter exists. Where the f do you expect me to leave my Christmas decorations and heavy winter coat during the summer? I feel thus. I was super poor at one point in my life. I'm doing better now. I had to save everything. Kinda broken step stool. Saving it because it will still work if you lean to the right. Someone giving away a dresser take it. You need storage space. Got given a new table. Keep the old one you might need it. Kid outgrows clothes. And there is another one. Save it all. If you're working two or three jobs to make ends meet. Cleaning up clutter takes time and energy that's not always there. Back when I was a kid the needle nose pliers we changed the channel on the TV with. One kid would change the channel while the other. Usually me. Went outside whatever the weather to turn the antenna until the channel came in. Then my dad would decide to go back to the other show and we'd repeat the process. Classy people use vice grips. That way you don't have to find the pliers. Yes about the antenna. We had a TV that had individual tuners for each station. It was really cool. It was a 10 inches but it meant you didn't have to climb on the roof. It had color too. I miss that TV. We bought it from La Bells back in the early 80s. The individual tuners was pretty cool. It didn't do proper UHF but we didn't have much UHF in our area anyway. We could swing channel 15 using the manual tuner on channel 12 but it was hard. We had to change the antenna so that it could get UHF then use the tuner to monkey with it. We had 2, 5, 6, 11, 13, and 15. Sketchy. Manual tuners are cool for analog. Reused Ziploc bags they still okay. My mom started doing that. 
not because of a shortage of money, but because she doesn't like throwing out plastic. I have a co-worker who reuses Ziploc bags too and she's quite well off. The reason she does it is because once upon a time she was on holidays in Jamaica, she was interacting with the locals and a bunch of kids started to follow her while giggling. She asked them what was up and they pointed to her back pocket. She had a Ziploc bag sticking out of it that she was gonna use to hold her phone and other stuff in while she was swimming. Anyway, she was confused and took it out and gave it to them. The kids grabbed it and played with it. She said they looked so happy playing with an empty Ziploc bag. It was at that moment she promised herself she will not be wasteful and recycle as much as she could. Just like reusing shopping bags for bin liners. A big rock we used one as a doorstop when I was a kid. Us too. I think they make great doorstops actually. Get a nice colorful piece of granite stone. Looks elemental and postmodern. Rich people pay crazy money for a rock doorstop. A space eater. Apparently some people have a thermostat that just makes their whole house warm. Spacer heaters are useful for if not everybody in the household likes the same temperature. Like my mom is always cold. I'm always hot. So she hire a space heater in her room but I don't. We have central heat air now. No longer poor. But not rich either. But I like the temp at 68F. Wife likes it at 72F. We compromise and leave it at 70F so that nobody's happy. Fun fact. Since space heaters use electrical resistance to create heat, they are essentially 100% efficient. 100% of the electricity used is converted into heat. But heat pump heaters, like the kind that are often used in combination with central AC, can be up to 2x more efficient. Produce the same amount of heat for 50% of the electrical energy, at least in most moderate climates. A roommate, that guy's a dick, why don't you just get your own place, because then I won't be able to afford a heater and enough space for a bed. Black mold on the bathroom ceiling and crusty faucets, those cheap plastic shutter blinds that's always missing 2 to 4 panels, the plastic containers from lunch meat or sour cream being used as Tupperware, free calendars from the Asian supermarket, those notepads with the local real estate agent on them. Folded towels being used as a kitchen bathroom mat. You put it all into words. These things that I grew up with, but never fully realized till now not sure how I feel lol. The sauce packet draw Trademark sign. Got extra ketchup packets. Taco Bell hot sauce packets. Soy sauce packets. ETC. Toss them in the sauce packet draw Trademark sign. From the makers of the extra drive through napkin pillar Trademark sign. After the apocalypse. I mean the next one. We may be living off our sauce stockpiles and those napkins might be the only remaining paper products to manage the consequences. Everyone knows those stain the glove box until they turn to dust. Every time I go over my sister's house I end up laughing at her because she's the only person I know who sorts a sauce packet drawer. She has each type of sauce in its own ziplock baggie. Baggy for soy sauce. Baggy for ketchup. Etc. She's nuts but I love her. I know the supply is getting low when I call my GF and ask if she wants anything from Taco Bell and she just yells sauce drawer. Laundry in the bathtub because you can't afford to take it to the laundromat and you don't have a washer dryer because they are too expensive and your tiny apartment has no hookups for them anyway. Yeah, once you can afford the drop off and fold you know you've made it in this world. I had the weirdest feeling in college when I did the math and realized it was cheaper to have someone else do my laundry than do it myself at the laundromat. I was living in student housing and the only options were the coin-op laundromat or the attached wash fold. To this day I do not understand why it was cheaper, not including my time, just actual cost, but it was one of the few moments in those days I felt rich. A large chest freezer stuffed with frozen food from the bargain shop and enough frozen meat to last a month with no paycheck. Hold on, you can afford a chest freezer? Free furniture, mismatched, chipped broken found on roadside, marked free, not enough chairs to seat the whole family for a meal, the folding chairs being in constant use, buying office chairs used for $15 20 bucks and making them last 5 years. My folks found a couch on the curb and picked it up, it was awful but they used it for years. They put it on the curb for the garbage man years later. Someone took it. A few days later, it was returned on the curb. Who does that? That thing in the kitchen. Where you store the things you might need but you never do. But you can't bring yourself to get rid of the stuff. 
and one plastic grocery bag stuffed full of other grocery balls. Putting all your food in the fridge because the cabinets are full of cockroaches and ants. Also we didn't have central air so the house sat at 100 degrees in the summer so bread and other grains would mold quickly. Also putting a wet washcloth in the freezer and put it on the back of your neck to cool you down during summer vacation and you were home alone. My ex was wealthy and never understood why I don't answer phone numbers I don't recognize. We just never did that at my house and now I understand it was probably to avoid debt collectors. Using the larger plastic shopping bags as trash can liners. It's giving single-use plastic a second use. It's environmentally something. Multiple. Uninsured, unregistered, uninspected, broken down cars that show no sign of restoration, mismatching lawn furniture, front yard, an above ground pool, several grills, smokers, a chain link fence around the property with a snarling rottweiler, a sign that says something about forget the guns, beware of owner on the front door, a bright red sticker from code enforcement stuck to the front window, a pink flamingo, welcome to Florida.